Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today is another subscriber requested video. On my 1000 subscriber giveaway video, I asked for suggestions and Yasinia Casio, I hope I'm saying that right, suggested vintage accent chairs or armchairs. Now I have done upholstery in the past, um, I haven't done it recently, but I decided to make a tutorial showing you how I started out using upholstery in my miniatures. I tried to make this tutorial super easy, super fast. I made both of these within three days, all while working and taking care of two monkeys. This video also marks the first time I have provided a free download for you guys. While this may not be the correct way or the professional way to upholster, it is a very fun way to get started. Here we go! The first thing you want to do is print off your template and make sure the one inch mark is actually one inch so you can make a 12th scale miniature. For your supplies, you'll need some scrap foam board and some thick paper. This is watercolor paper, but you can use any kind of thick paper. You'll need a fabric design of your choice. You'll need some quilt batting. You can get this at any fabric store. You will also need a dowel rod or something that you want to make the furniture legs with. You need something to cut the wood legs, some scissors, and an X-Acto knife and a pencil, and you will also need hot glue and tacky glue. I will be going back and forth between these two glues, but you can do the whole thing with tacky glue if that's all you have. You will want to cut your template in half. The bottom half of the template has pieces that need to be put on foam board and the top half need to be put on thick paper. I go ahead and cut them all out as carefully as I can and then start transferring them onto the foam board using a pencil. After they've been transferred, you can use an X-Acto knife to cut them all out. Make sure that your X-Acto knife is straight up and down, otherwise you'll get beveled edges and this will make it harder to put your miniature together. I always try to make sure I get even and correct cuts on my foam board as this is the base of my whole project and I want it to be done well. I'm using hot glue to put the foam pieces together, but you can also use tacky glue. You just have to allow for more dry time. I'm going to put the hot glue on the side L piece and then butt it up against the side of my back piece. You can look at the template if you're confused on where you need to put the glue. Do this for both sides. After that is complete, you're going to put the piece marked D, which is the bottom of the chair, and you actually have two pieces that are marked with the letter D, and that is because you are going to be doubling them up so we have an extra thick base to the chair. If you feel like any of your pieces came out uneven, you can add a little bit of hot glue and smooth it out with the nose of the hot glue gun, or you can choose to use an X-Acto knife to even up the edges. I like to use the glue gun because no one will see it and it's a little bit easier. After the foam board base is complete, you're ready to start the upholstery part. You're going to take some tacky glue, put it on the outside edge of one of the L pieces, and lay down a piece of batting across the glue. After that, you want to flip it over, and you're going to cut off any pieces that are over the edge of the L piece. You want to cut right up to the edge. Do this for both sides of the chair. After both L pieces are covered, you can then cover the back following the same procedure. Make sure you cut off any overlapping pieces. Now we need to cover the edges. You want to cover the front bottom edge with the quilt batting and then cut off any overlapping pieces. You're also going to want to do this on the sides of the arms. So this is going to be a long, thin piece that creates kind of an S shape going down or up the side of the chair. Let that glue for a little bit before you start cutting it off or else it may start to come off of the miniature while you're cutting it. 
After you've done this a few times, you may find that there are some steps that you want to do differently or omit or things you want to add. This is really a very versatile um, tutorial and you can kind of change it to your needs. Lastly, we want to cover the top. So you're gonna do the same thing with a thin piece. You should have several thin pieces left over from the process of covering the edges previously. So you just glue that on and you should be done covering the outside edges of the chair. Now it's on to the exciting part, the fabric. Always make sure you know the right side of your fabric and the wrong side. You always want the wrong side to face in to the quilt batting and the right side to face out because that's the finished side you want people to see. You're going to cut a shape that is just a little bit bigger than the back of your chair, enough so that it can wrap around and glue onto the side. You're going to glue the sides down first, pushing them onto the quilt batting, and then when you get to the top, you're going to use just a dab of hot glue to firmly get that very top piece to push down, and then you want this to be a very tight curve and so slowly go around and you might even have to fold the fabric a little bit to get it to go around the curve at the top of the chair. A lot of upholstery is just going to be tugging and pulling on the fabric until it moves into the shape that you want it to be. On the bottom, you're gonna fold the ends in just like you would kind of on the end of a present that you are wrapping. Next, we want to do the front of the chair. You're gonna make a piece that is a little bit wider and a, just a little bit higher than the seat of the chair. And then you wanna make sure that it is firmly glued to the front face of the chair. After that's firmly in place, you can start manipulating the fabric so it looks like a smooth transition. In this instance, I'm just pushing it back with my fingers so that it makes a fold into the armchair. I'm going to put that in place with tacky glue. Also, I want to make sure after I have glued that down that any of the loose edges are glued down as well so they don't later pop up or make a fold underneath my final layer of fabric. For the sides of the chair, I need to cut a large piece and then make a hem on one end. I'm just using tacky glue and then folding over to make a straight line. This line is gonna line up with the back of my chair. I'm just going to line it up carefully, make sure that there's a little extra fabric at the top and the bottom of the chair. I wanna put glue all around. Remember when you're gluing, you do not want gigantic globs. If your fabric is thin enough, the glue will seep through your fabric and make a stain on the other side. So always thin out your glue after you've put it on. After I've glued it down to my L shape on the side of the chair, I'm going to use scissors and cut closely to the L shape, but not all the way to the edge. I need this fabric to fold over the side of the L shape, so I need some leeway in the fabric. Wherever the fabric is going to be going around a curve, I need to take my scissors and put small cuts into the fabric that are radiating from the curve. This is going to help the fabric flow more easily over the curve without having to do a lot of bending or folding in the fabric. You will be using this technique several times in this tutorial, so if it frustrates you, make sure to practice it a few times. After you've done all your snips, you want to carefully and slowly tacky glue all the edges down. Go slow, make sure you've got a shape that you like, check the outside, check the inside, make sure it's going the way you want it to. You wanna do this for both sides of the chair. After you've done this, you have a chair that is completely covered on the outside and you are ready to work on the inside. Now you need to find the half of the template that you haven't used yet. This is the part of the template that you're going to put on to thick paper. You can also use the thin cardboard from a cereal box. I'm using watercolor paper. You can also use cardstock, although it might be a little bit too thin to be able to hold its shape. You're gonna follow the same steps you did with the foam board by tracing it onto the thick paper and then cutting them out. 
Next, you want to glue the pieces onto the quilt batting and then cut them out. This is gonna leave each piece with quilt batting on only one side. This is where you can start getting creative by building up your quilt batting. A lot of chairs have puffs in certain places, are a little bit thicker in some places. You can do this on the seat, you can do it on the back, you can even do it on the outside, even though I didn't. But I did want to show you that you can layer this quilt batting to get different effects. I'll be putting three layers on the back of this chair so that it puffs out a little bit at the top once it's finished. I suggest you use tacky glue for gluing down the quilt batting to itself. If you use hot glue, you run the chance of it forming hard nodules wherever it dries. After that's complete, you can now cover it with the fabric. Just like we did on the back of the chair, you want to leave a little on the edges so that you're able to fold it over. You can do the sides first. The part that you want to pay attention to is the top. The sides and the bottom will kind of be nestled into the back of the chair, but you will be able to see the top very well. So go slowly, manipulate that fabric so that you have a smooth curve over the top of the back piece. Next, you can go ahead and glue that piece in, and we're starting to have something resembling an armchair. You're going to follow the same steps for the inside side pieces, the L shapes. Remember when you're doing this to use the minimal amount of glue and to also cut those radial slits around the round, around the curved edges so that you can carefully pull those over so that they make a smooth transition all around the edge of the L piece. You're going to want to do this for both of the inside L pieces. After you've finished that, glue them in. Make sure you push them back a little bit against the back piece. You don't want there to be any gaps between the back of the L piece and the back piece of the chair. And I really, really hope this is all making sense. Next, we need to cover the seam lines that you can see going down the arms of the chair. We're gonna do this very easily by cutting a quarter inch thick piece of paper. I'm going to first measure and make sure the size of the quarter inch piece that I need and then I am going to cover it in the matching fabric. I'm just simply doing this by adding some glue. I'm going to cut a little bit closer because I don't want the fabric overlapping on the back making it thicker so I want it to just fold over about halfway over the piece of paper. After that's finished I can carefully start at the bottom of the chair and then work my way up slowly. I want to keep eyeing the chair, make sure that it's centered on the arm piece going up. It's very easy to get this off center, so make sure you're constantly double checking yourself. You also want to be pushing it down onto the chair. Because the arm is curved, it's going to want to pop up if the glue is not completely dry. So continually push down and check that it is in the center. Once you get to the top, this is where you're going to start manipulating the fabric again. Add some glue, you're going to turn the piece under and then just move it around and fold it until you're happy with the seam that it creates. Follow this process for both sides of your chair, constantly checking that they match. Now remember the foam piece labeled E? We haven't used that one yet. That's going to be the cushion of our chair. You want to cover that with the quilt batting and one side needs to fold over that's going to be the front of the cushion. I'm going to use the same process of building up the quilt batting to make it just a little bit squishier and then I'm going to cover it just like I have the other pieces. On this one, you want to pay close attention to the front of the cushion and make sure that it looks nice once you've folded it. There are probably several different ways to fold fabric. I probably do not do it the right way, but um, as long as the front piece comes out looking smooth, then I think you know any way you do it will probably work out. So you want the bottom of the cushion to be flat. After that, just glue the cushion in and we are almost there. On to the feet. You want to mark off where the feet are going. I usually do them about a quarter inch in on all sides. 
and I poke it with a pin first and then scissors to get it a little bit bigger and then finally I'm going to use my dowel that's going to become the feet and make sure that those foam board holes are big enough. Now I'm going to cover it with a piece of fabric. I'm going to make sure and get that glue all the way around but not in the holes for the feet. I'm going to glue the fabric on and I want to make sure that it's a little bit smaller than the base of the chair so I don't have any unfinished edges sticking out from underneath the chair. To create the feet I'm going to just use a dowel rod and I'm going to shave down one end of it just to give it a little bit of shape. Of course you can buy pre-made chair feet. Um, I sometimes just make my own as long as they're simple. After that I'm going to measure how long I want the feet to be cut it off with just an extra eighth inch or so because I know that part will be going into the chair and I'm going to cut it with my wood chopper. I'm going to make sure and make four of these that are the exact same length. After that, if you would like to paint it or stain it, do that before you attach it to the chair so you don't actually get accidentally get that onto the fabric. After that's done, I need to refine my holes. Make sure that the fabric is dry before you do this. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I am going to cut an X wherever I feel that there is a hole in the foam board underneath. After I cut the X, I'm going to do that to all four spots and then I am going to do the same process where I use the end of a pair of scissors to make the holes just a little bit bigger. And then I am finally going to use the dowel to make the fabric holes just a little bit bigger. Now I'm going to fill each with tacky glue. I do not suggest that you do this with hot glue. Tacky glue is going to give you way more leeway in making sure that your feet are all the same length and pointing in the correct directions. I make my feet point slightly out, but you of course can do whatever you want to do, but make sure you're happy with it before the glue dries. Always make sure that you leave it to dry with all four feet on your mat with the chair sitting straight. Check it several times, make sure it's not lopsided, and if it is, you can either pull one leg out or push another leg back in. Thank you guys so much for joining in today. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you leave a like. If you have another suggestion for a future video, leave it in the comments. I always write those down on a list and it may just become a future video. If you make a miniature using this tutorial, please, please, please tag me on Instagram at Bentley House Minis. I love to see what you guys create. I hope you have an amazing week and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Let's.